Hello and welcome to Iceman Channel. This all began when Daniel Droproot Reigns recreated his own firmware after seeing N4Ab's door simulator. But Droproot's firmware isn't for door simulators. His firmware is for weaponized readers. This video is all about that specific firmware. I'm going to show you the flashing, the UAI. UI interface and walk you through some of the modifications I had to make in order to make it work with a door simulator. Let's jump into it. When Daniel posted about his um, functionalities in his firmware on Twitter uh, or X, I uh, was happy because I've seen his development for some time and now I was able to actually make a video about it, which I want to do. Here is his original post where he's mentioned it and he has a link to his YouTube where he, he has hooked it up to a microcontroller and a door controller as well in a genuine setup. I don't have that stuff, but this firmware is still not uh, public in that sense, uh, but it's shared among some people. I know it will be public and open sourced on a GitHub repo, but it's not there yet. I have a door simulator, but his firmware is made for this. This is an ESP key, and you use that to weaponize readers. Weaponize readers, you say? Well, it's an older concept made famous by Francis Brown back in Bishop Fox times 2012 at Defcon Talks and Black Hat Talks. And you can know more about it that way if you want to know. I need to know that this ESP key I have here, you know, it uses vegan and it works for there and has an ESP in it. And it's supposed to work with this. What is this you say? Well, let me show you. In this nice box, I bought a p200 from paxton on ebay which he got recommended and he has a large nice reader into it this reader whoa has two different covers if you want this pale one or the nice sleek black one but the thing is with it is it's very easy to extract the cover Voila. So now you have a long range reader. I think you get 20 to 30 centimeters of distance with this one. I don't know what it is in freedom units. And uh, it runs on 12 volts and clocking data. You get an interesting RJ45 connector that shows you these uh, cables inside, which is actually exactly the same as you see here. So. It's not an Ethernet connector in that sense. It uses the same signals. It just uses the form factor, which is good. So this usually is what you would hook an ESP key to, and then you would have a battery to it, and then you would have a weaponized reader that you put in a backpack or something like that. Okay? I don't want to use it with this ESP key. I want to use it with the door simulator. So I had to make some adjustments to make this work. And I'm going to show you about it. A quick look in the back side of this one again is that I've entered my magnetic top uh, USB C connector to this one here because it's much easier when I want to program this one. The ESP32 that's here. This here is the power, it goes on 12 volts and with boost converters. This is the clock and data lines. This is LED lines, all three of them. So you use this one extra breakouts here, pin 27. And they have a five point voltage going to the pull up resistors on 1K resistors that have added to these data lines. Now, 26 and 25 here, the pins over here in this side there, which is free will be used for relaying if you want to do that. Now, I want to tell you how this works by doing this and hook up to the development environment. 
and I'm going to connect this to the serial that is exposed when you hook up to that one. So this ESP32 dev board that's on this door simulator is not a genuine one. So it's a Chinese clone of sorts. So it acts a little bit more different and you have some issues with it when you want to flash it and enter the bootloader. I will show you. This here is on the left hand side. On this side is the original door simulator code from Evil Daemon. And it doesn't compile on version 2.0 for me on the Arduino Studio or Arduino IDE Studio. So I had to go back to 1.18. And here on this side is the C implementation, which is Daniel Droproot's original Paxto Gedon firmware. Like you see here, it tells you how it works with the pins and how to read out the different formats. You also see that he uses both cores on the ESP32. It uses the web server task to have a web server on the core one and the rest of the reading the GPIO pins for the reader, it's running on core one. So that's quite stable in that sense. Now what I had to do was to use the LCD, which is hooked up in the door sims, and I had different pins. I added the pull-up resistors, and the original firmware from Daniel had a Wi-Fi button that you could swap between hooking up to a local um, Wi-Fi network or, or be an uh, access point. So my door sim is only an access point. It meant at least adding up the liquid crystal light to C squared and changing the pins, which is here. And I had to adapt the yellow pin because it's on pin 27, what I pointed out before. And this is the password and setup. It has the same IP as the door sim by now. So this is all cool and done. I added some nice extra characters to make some fun, print all the numbers, we don't do a CTF mode because this firmware does not have a CTF mode like the original door sim have. And then, um, yeah, when you read out some data from it, it just makes sure that it does. Here's the setup, by the way. So start up LCD, make sure that it's there, make sure the pin's up and running. And if you want to print something, you just you call it like this. So that's nice. Configure LCD means it prints out some other data outs. And this is the loop that runs all the time. It keeps on updating the LCD. I want to do more stuff with it, but it is what it is. And it's kind of nice. So here's the thing. When you compile this and it acts a little bit strange and you want to upload it because that's how it works, you can press Ctrl U to let the Arduino Studio update and flash the firmware onto your ESP32 and you press Control U. Now, there's a trick with this, with this dev board that is on this door sims. And it means that once this compile and says this is ready to connect to your device, you need to press this button there. Meanwhile, in a specific moment, and that specific moment is when it says connecting and shows a lot of dots here. And I will try to do it so you can see what happens. I will show you this because this got me stuck for some time. Connecting, I'm pressing the button for a while, releasing it, and it goes into flashing. Done. Cool, I can now remove this one because I don't want it to be powered on that part. And the beauty with magnetic stripes or magnetic connectors is that you don't have to do any force with it. It's very easy. So how does this one look like when you boot it up nowadays? Then? Well, it's not that sexy in the sense. I tried to make it a little bit more sexy and let me show you. Yeah, some nice sign graphics. And uh, I couldn't resist myself. And now it's up and running. So now you can hook up to the SSID pack together and with that password on that IP address. When I present a card, 
it tells you what it is, the card number, if I take another one, you see the switch knockout yellow. It's nice, right? So how does this look like? So this is a laptop that I remote desktop to because that phone one has both a Wi-Fi and a fixed Ethernet port. And I have to connect to the device by going in here and connect. It says connected, but I'm doing it anyway just to show you. I will refresh this page on 192.168.4.1. It looks a little bit different, a little bit simpler than the door sims uh, UI. It has four buttons, refresh, on, off, export, and clear and reboot. So one thing to know with this is that this saves all the found credentials onto the spiffs on the ESP. Reboot, yes, reboots the ESP32. Export will give you a nice file, all the collected access tokens, the binaries, the bit length, and what it was in a nice CSV file. Refresh means it have, if I print, oh, let's see, let's clear this one, this one sheet, yes, and you get a specific. <laughs> message saying if you want to clear a log. Because when it's gone, it's gone. Now with refresh off means that if I put a card on to the reader, nothing happens. I have to manually refresh with. If I put out a refresh on and present a card, it will show directly here in the UI. If you look at clearly here, it's the last card that you read, you will see what card number, card type, what color, bit count, and the binaries. This is what's loaded up here. This is what you see in the log as well. But if you look at, if I hover here, uh, put my mouse onto one of these ones here, you can see in the way in the bottom, in the small, small things, it says 192.168.14.1 slash replay card. So this firmware, as I said, is meant to weaponize a reader. So if you click on this one, it would now have replayed on those out pins. As you see up here, that is replay and it sent it. So if I want to send this one, I just click here and now it replayed this one instead. So it's simpler than the ESP weaponized reader firmware if we compare to it. I do like this. So the ESP firmware is a little bit different. It's a little bit more uh, adapted to this one, but to the purpose of making a weaponized reader, making it look nice. But they've spent very much more time. The firmware from Daniel here is really good step. And uh, yeah, let me just show you here on the, on the card as well. It says what it replayed. So if I press another one here, you can see I'm now replaying another card. So this is what the user interface is for. So it's good for me and when I do things. So basically it is, it's, it's a simpler version than the ESP32 firmware, but it's really, really good as it is. And it uh, does the work properly, it's easy to adapt, and it works on ESP32, meaning that, uh, and it's made in C, so you can get a good speed of it. It's not a problem with uh, N4Rab's implementation, which it was in MicroPython and quite slow. So this is kind of spiffy and fast in working with it. And there we have it. Let me know in comments below what you thought about this and what you would use it for. And I see you later. As a side thing, I know that this is what people don't listen to anymore. I'm going to head out to disobey the conference in Finland next week. And I hope you to see you there. Until then, take care.